Welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in the Philippines, hot as balls. And it's time to have another comic book conversation with my good friend, Doc. How you doing, Doc? I am spectacular, sir. And thank you for, well, forcing me to read this bullshit. Wait, why am I thanking you? I have no idea. Fuck you. Well, well we're not doing <laughs> Superman yet. We're doing the conversation first. Oh, okay. I am absolutely spectacular, sir. And this is a... uh a fun topic we've talked about how like wizard magazine blew up we talked about the life and death of wizard magazine nothing has ever really filled that void so we have this comic media that just doesn't work whatsoever they can't actually report on news topics associated with comic books because no one believes a word they say anymore they can't actually generate hype for anything good in comic books because no one believes a word they say and it's kind of left me wondering can comic book media, whether it be print or, or like a news website or something like that, can it even be saved? Does it need to be Substack or something like that now? I feel like there is always the chance to, to save something. I mean, something might need to absolutely collapse into borderline oblivion before it happens, but I feel like there's always the chance. And I, I feel like the entire model for comic book media modern comic book media is part of the reason why this is this is this way i'm with you because there's too much of a closeness between the people covering the comic industry and the comic publishers themselves basically they're paying for the news feeds with like free content like we'll give you free comic books or we'll give you an exclusive interview or will let you talk about it two hours before everyone else, i.e. it's the access media rather than a critical media that's actually overwatching and letting people know what's important, what's not, what they can believe and what they can't. It is access media because it's not about being right. It's about being first. It's not about having the best content. It's about having the quickest and most content. While Wizard, you know, they obviously suffered from their own personal biases. When you're dealing with a magazine that's a subscription format that comes out on a monthly basis, you're not worried about being first because every magazine's coming out at the same fucking time. They're all coming out on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever the hell it was. But now it's about who can get a story and a hyperlink trending faster. And I believe this is kind of the, the problem that all media suffers from in the in the internet age is there a solution for i don't know but you are right it's access media that's where it stopped at least when garib sheamus owned wizard he could do whatever he wanted he could he could shit on books he could not shit on books if they didn't get the early release who cares because they just go to the store on wednesday grab the book buy it and review it for an article well, and the thing with Wizard Magazine is they had a reputation, and for the most part, for several years, they were very aware of that. This is who we are. These are our customers, and this is what they're looking for. We can't actually say something is good if it's bad, just so a, a writer will like us, or we can go to a dinner with some people that are powerful within comic books. They actually kind of protected the shield to a degree for a while, but unfortunately, they eventually did get infiltrated by people that weren't looking to talk about comic books or cover comic books. They wanted to get into comic books, and they saw that as a venue into the industry itself, and it basically ended up destroying Wizard as well. I mean, this is kind of like the 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 pros and cons of a monopoly. They were a monopoly. They were the they were the monopoly on comic book media. So, as much as Marvel and DC would have loved to be able to kind of force them into just being stenographers for their PR department, they couldn't because there was no one else to go to. But now with the internet age, okay, fine. If bleeding cool starts tearing into the, the, the content, they just start giving exclusives to, to CBR. If CBR does it, they go to the beat. If the beat does it, they, they go to the next one and the next one. And the next one, there's always another comic book media website that they can decide is the one that's the, the real media of comic books. That The only reason that they've decided it is because they have all of the power in this dynamic. They can just replace you like that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. When you think about Wizard, you said they were Monopoly. They were a brand unto themselves. 
maybe not bigger than Marvel or DC, but it was something else. And it did seem like it was something that couldn't be destroyed, but they eventually did destroy themselves. And no one has learned this lesson that you actually have to have your voice. You have to have your standards and you have to adhere to them or people lose trust in what you're actually trying to do. And once you lose the trust of the people, your customers, you don't have anything if you're in the media business. No, absolutely not. I mean, we're seeing this in in the modern mainstream media as well. People are abandoning it. The 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 ratings on TV news are dropping like the goddamn Titanic. The clicks on on internet news are going up if it's trustworthy. Anywhere that seems trustworthy is what people will you know flock to in their media regardless of if it's comic book movies tv music politics whatever well another thing i think that's really destroyed like the modern uh, comic book media themselves is they no longer want to cover comic books they want to influence them as well by going out there and saying comic books need to you know become more diverse we need to do this we need to do that and they all pushed it like in unison talk about like whisper campaigns and behind the scenes stuff it's clear that they were all talking to each other saying this is what we have to push within comic books the publishers eventually acquiesced with that direction it destroyed the business and they actually can't admit that they were wrong and it's probably a better idea to go back to what worked even 15 years ago it's it's just revert to last known good and and the 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 comic book industry just refuses to do it the comic book media and all the media have been now they got infiltrated essentially by ideologues regardless of what bent they are ideologues in they got infested with ideologues that were using the media as a stepping stone into those companies then those companies started getting infested with the same ideologues the the publishers couldn't retreat if they wanted to because they don't have anybody that's not a weirdo ideologue They've convinced themselves, they built up this mind prison that the media matters, that it can actually influence real world events with their publishing and having to acknowledge that their whole attempt to build themselves up through control of the comic book media was for naught if they accept the fact that they can't tear them down either in the real world. It was all for naught, Doc. There's no hype available to be generated by like a CBR Bleeding Cool, IATP, all these people could all say the exact same thing, and they've done it plenty of times, and it never helps. How many articles did we get on John Kent Superman coming out as gay? We got articles from every one of those websites. We got news coverage from CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, worldwide coverage about this, and guess what it did for the sales? It bumped it up for one month, and then they plummeted like a rock, which was to be expected. Once you realize the comic book wasn't even a superhero comic book anymore, they will not accept that all of their attempts at social engineering and building this you know, weird new industry and weird new customer base, customer base was a waste of time. They will not accept it. That would t- take a degree of self-awareness that they are incapable of to accept the fact that all of their efforts in all of these things didn't put a single fucking ass in a seat. No, but they got a lot of Twitter likes, and I guess that's what it's all built around. What if I was to say this, Doc? I think the comic book media has already fixed itself. It's already been saved, but it's not in the printed page. It's not within websites or anything like that. Basically, YouTubers came to the rescue, and we already fixed it for them, and they're basically obsolete now. They made themselves that way. Well, yeah, I mean, especially in an era where people have gone more and more and more and more to video content for delivery. I mean, hell, half the news stations, like if you were to go to your local, you know, ABC affiliate, three quarters of the articles on their website are just clips from last night's news. They don't even have news articles anymore. So we've already moved into a a, a video based world and they're still trying to make print co- uh, print media on a screen matter the the youtube side of of comics journalism comics criticism comics editorial it 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 supplanted the print side long ago and 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 the thing is you guys get thousands more you know views on your video for longer periods of time 
then they even get clicks on their stupid free website. Yeah, and a lot of times it's covering their their articles and making fun of them, like a Heidi McDonald, right? She worked at Vertigo. She's a tastemaker within comic books. The comics beat, owned by like Cubanoid and all these other places over time. If she does a live stream right now, she might get five people to join her for the live stream itself. I haven't done that that poorly on my channel for like five years. Yeah, I think that I'm was not like- anybody. I'm not even published. That's not even to go out to the people that are in YouTube, like a Richard, who is a published comic book writer. In fact, he's a New York Times bestselling comic book writer. Doug Ernst is a published comic book creator now. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver obviously worked at DC Comics. If you go over to Clownfish TV, Neon and Geeky Sparkles, they worked at Disney. He used to be an artist within the industry itself. So you don't just have people like me who enjoy comic books, want to be a critical eye. You actually have professionals that have come to here and really put the comic book industry to task and basically have made websites in in magazines irrelevant now i i hate to tell them but i I, now granted i love i very much prefer written news articles than you know short video clip for for reading about like sports and whatnot but there is no way you can get the kind of personality and you know unique takes out of magazines and website articles that you can out of you know comic book youtube and the journalism and the overall reporting on the industry events that you can on youtube these people sitting there looking at it going oh well we're tastemakers we're this we're that none of these people put a single ass in a seat they think that they get a bunch of you know coverage on or a bunch of clicks on their on their website means that they actually matter. Wouldn't you think that them coming and sitting down and actually being face to face with their readers on YouTube, if you're doing a live stream where you can interact with the audience, the audience can interact with you. Wouldn't you think that that would probably be a huge appeal to a lot of people, except for none of these people can ever get anyone to even show up because nobody cares what they actually have to think. And half the time, if you're on YouTube and you are accessible and you're doing live streams, you actually have to put up with criticism. You have to put up with people telling you you're stupid, pointing out everything wrong that you've done. And I can tell you, I've got a much thicker skin now than I did when I started. But a lot of people are never going to get to the point where somebody can say that they are wrong and be able to go on with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, these people are so thin skinned that they can get cut by a sharp breeze. Them being on YouTube and actually having a comment section that is not incredibly, incredibly closely curated to prevent their delicate little fifis from getting hurt will put most of them. I mean, they're probably all going to start claiming PTSD if they actually got more than 10 people to show up into their co- into the into the live chat. They would not know how to handle it. People sit here. We we do comic aficionados every Saturday morning. People call me a fucking idiot all the time. I'm good with it. Doesn't bother me. None of the things that that anybody ever says get you upset. They don't get me upset. Um, They don't get other people upset. There are some that, that do still have a thin skin. It's still infinitely tougher than people that hide comments on on Twitter uh, whenever they uh, they might get some negative feedback to a link to one of their articles that, that'll do the hide resp- replies or the, they'll make it only so that their followers can reply. Those are the type of people you're dealing with. They're never going to be able to survive in an environment where people are actually able to come in and criticize them. They they literally spent how many years throwing an absolute temper tantrum over Richard for calling somebody a fake geek girl and laughing at bad comic books. Really? Dan Slott couldn't handle message boards. Yeah, when he can't handle message boards, what a giant, massive, gaping pussy. Yeah, so it's interesting stuff. I don't think the comic book media as we know it can ever be saved. I don't ever see a wizard magazine coming back, even if it was like a website or something like that. Maybe you'll get stuff like that within YouTube itself, but it's all real time now. You're not really curating the best information for the month and really trying to highlight an artist here or there. You're trying to keep up with the news as it's happening, as the industry is moving forward day by day. And it's just a different way of looking at comic books. So I don't think we can go back to the way it was 
to the High Times Wizard magazine, but I think we're already moving towards the way it's going to be where there is honest journalism around comic book. You're just not going to find it on websites. You're not going to find it in a magazine. You're going to have to come to YouTube and find the people whose voices that you trust and maybe find a few of them and see what you think about the the industry and what, what's going on right now. Yeah, I mean, the, the future of comics journalism is in a lot of ways tied to the future of all journalism. It's going to be a lot of citizen journalism and it's going to be people that just don't lie. All you got to do is tell the truth and the viewers show up. Speaking of telling the truth and the people showing up, this is the first big video I really ever did on my channel, exposing something going on within the industry. Yes, I had a pretty big Superman video before this, But when I talk about Comics Alliance, it really put the channel on the map. And I think people realized I was here to say something impactful, say something important, and expose a lot of really bad people in comic books. If you haven't seen this video, Wayback Machine, production's not all that great, but it's really good content. There's also a link in the video description. 